did the sushi one too. But anyway, we remember we sat across from that guy Greg, and we never found him again, and his wife. Vaguely, the guy that brought his iPad and took pictures well, with it. Telling you, it was a special memory for me, and so I we know. I'm trying. You have dinner. the wrong fucking chef. It was a chef from New Orleans that was doing it. Okay, whatever. It was a great dinner. I the, did, the guy had a whale on his iPad. How did you remember his name? Don't don't slander me for that. I was just curious. I, I still have the other half of the story, but it oh. was good. Yeah, that did. I think you brought me to that. You included me on that because you had a you had done a couple things with Uchi that summer. Yeah, it was an Uchi garden. It was, it was like awesome, incredible. Before the skyline got too big, and you could just see. Yeah, I mean, it was it was delicious. I mean, Uchi's probably one of the better sushi. I, somebody brought it up the other day. What's the best sushi in Denver? And oh. currently, I think the conversation, obviously, you have to play into everything with food, but also the vibe, like you were talking I, about. I'm with you on that. Zach doesn't agree with us, but me and you are the same on that. Well, like, even if the vibe is, like, something like, I love La Diablo because it's a little bit more rustic, mm-hmm. you know, like the pleated table tops, you know, people come and go quickly. They turn tables. They'll bring you a mezcal shot. Like you drink mm-hmm. beer and you can kind of just relax. I like that, but also like the Uchi, they do very well in that. But Tamaki Den mm-hmm. is killing that. it inside the source. And so anybody that'll listen, I talk about it every I week. I mean, if I'm in the source, I'm at Safta, but I'm also at Grabowski's. Like there's so... Oh, Bayota's wonderful at, too. The source is good. And it's a hotel in Denver if you're visiting... Do that. Um, yeah, the source is really popping. They kind of found their groove. Um, the rooftop drinks. I've went up that. I don't even know the name of that place. The Woods, yes, I believe. The Woods. Yeah. So, I mean, the Palomas are delicious up there. Mm. Yeah, we're finding them. Okay, so we want to talk a little bit about, obviously, you're a Denverite. We're hanging out in your uh, studio this week. But we want to kind of get what the vibe is. Obviously, you work with more of the the cleaner lifestyles, a little bit more of the health and wellness than we do. Not necessarily. I mean, you still party with like a rock star. So we want to pick your brain. What have you been up to like food wise? Like what are some places that you've been vibing on that have been doing things what you may think is either the right way or, you know, that are hitting on things that you're trying to eat while also, you know, being smart about eating, putting what you put in your body. Well, I'm using like thin strips. (laughs) Well, uh, if it's the weekend, you can catch me at Spinelli's, which is an Italian deli on, like, I want to say 23rd in Cold Cut? Dexter. Oh, it's, like, east of Colorado Boulevard, just east of the park. It is, I get a sandwich there. I buy my guanciale there to make pasta at home. They have a ton of great Italian specialty product, products. Um, also... Big fan of Lou's Burger Fridays in the summer. Do they do that every Friday? Yeah, and it took them some time to bring it back. So if anyone is listening, I am upset with you. And I was commenting on their Instagram. I was like, when are you bringing back Burger Fridays? They brought it back, and then they did it like a Friday and Saturday. But it's like 4 to 8. You can order it online. Go pick it up. I'm telling you. Fuck yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's the gym we needed to do. It is. Sliders, doubles and singles, little crispy, crunchy, thin fries. Ooh, like a shoestring? Yeah. If you had to give me your top three French fries, what would your top three French fries be? Oh, well. Like, do you go for the crunching bunch where you, you kind of grab your fingers like a, the claw from the video game? Or from oh, the game? sometimes you can use a fork to dip those in the cheese, like the skinny, like, crunchies. In the cheese. <laughs> she did y'all, she didn't even fucking bother with a condiment. Like, mayo is gross. But no, she, she was mayo. like... She was like, no, we're going, we're dipping our fries in cheese. That's yeah, fucking wonderful. Is like steak and shake, like growing up, that's what I used to have. You wouldn't, you don't, you, you ask for cheese as your primary dipping no, sauce? No, but like the skinny crunchies, for sure. Like a steak and shake. Also, okay. in out. Also Portillo's. Like, Portillo's, what? you don't know that life. You're from the South. I mean, no. I, I mean, I'm not. I know Portillo's hot dogs. I've had one, but I don't know their french fry off the top of my head. What kind of, what texture are we talking about? What's the ratio of potato to crunch? Well, their fries are crinkle fries, which is um, kind of a classic from Chicago. Get in a beef. You get some fries. Fucking crinkles. But I really love waffle fries. I also love curly fries. Like, listen, it's just, I'll... <laughs> All potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm accepting of all. And potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Mayo. I love mayo too. I love love Dukes. Hellman's. Or do you make your own? I make my own. 
What, what, what are the top three most popular recipes currently on your pages? Mm. I don't know. I feel like people make a lot of my salads. Yeah? Yeah, I do a lot of chopped salads. Portillo's, which is... Actually, I made it for you one time when I came over. With the, When I had the, the torn Achilles? It had the noodles in it. I the blue cheese and the bacon, and you were like literally ate three bowls of it and were moaning. It's delicious. It's like pathetic. You can't remember. <laughs> I mean, we have a... I I remember different things. We eat a lot here on this podcast. And while Chris isn't here right now, he's out eating. He's doing his job. So, you know, he's working hard. So I can't be, I'm you know, I am remiss that I missed it. But maybe I'll have you remake it for us and bring it over. Yeah, that's a popular one. One that went viral on TikTok was this, like, chopped Asian-inspired peanut dressing Ramen noodle kind of sliced almonds vibe, which was really good. Okay, what's your favorite date night spot? Here? Yeah. I'm um, giving you some rapids. Some rapids? I mean, Hop Alley, if I don't say it enough. It's just one of my favorite places to go. I love the music. I love the vibe. I consider that when I go places. Of course, the food is really important and the drinks and the service, but it's just the overall experience. So I consider that when I recommend that to people. Hop Alley, I love. Um, I love going to see Andrea and going to El Posto. His food is great. Yeah, they have a new chef over there. The guy is a trained Michelin star, two and three. Um, worked with Manny over at Bayota for a little while, but the guy fucking kills it. I gotta tell you what we did for our date for our anniversary. What's that? We just celebrated four years. Congrats! This summer, yeah. I love Kai. He's a hoot and a holler. He is. I've had his golf clubs kidnapped for two fucking years. I feel bad for him. His game's probably going to shit. It's been like a year. Yeah. It's COVIDy. Yeah, COVIDy. Um, that usually happens when I, because we we were friends first, and I was like, oh man, you're gonna love Kai, my husband. Yeah, he's awesome. And then they just fell in love and hang out. He is fun. Um, he is. He likes to party as well. So, um, so for our anniversary, I actually posted on Instagram. I was like, "What is the best spa in Denver? Like, give me the place I can go. Just post up for the day, enjoy, feel relaxed." And a lot of people said this, and I'm so glad that I got this tip. If you, so we went to the Four Seasons downtown. Yeah. If you book the first spa appointment on a weekday, Monday through Thursday, so we did the massage at 10 a.m., you can have access to the pool for the day. It's only a Monday through Thursday thing. So we went at like 9, 9.30, did the like steam room, sauna, whatever, 10 o'clock couples massage. It was fucking incredible. And then met each other by the pool. Ordered chicken tendies, had a little tacos, had a little watermelon tequila vibe. It was so great, so luxe. The weather was, you know, sunny, blue sky, Denver, and then the storm rolled in for five minutes. But it was nice, and I highly recommend it if you want to like that's a life hack. That's what do, that's what people look at for on the pod. Well done. Yeah. Lose burgers and four seasons uh, day spa hacks. Yeah. I mean, well done. I mean, I'm a big car driver fan too, but I feel like everybody knows about that now. Yeah, the low high scene's better, in my opinion, because the. Can turn that down if you want. Well, I didn't want to break it or anything. No, that like little twisty thing on the top. Uh. You can loosen that and then push it how you want. Oh. Uh. There we go. Um, I like Car Driver. I like Car Driver Low High more because yeah, um, I like their wine list and I like to be able to sit there and hang out for a little while. I like it. The vibe is like I love fun. Patrick who works there. It's great. It's a good time. <laughs> and the piata bread and the can- tin yeah. fish and everything. It's a fun time. So that's fair. Okay. So we've done day night. We've done best French fries. We've done most viral videos. Before we let you go, Cassidy, I feel like we have. What do we have on the docket for the fall for Cassidy? I know you mentioned you've just kind of un, semi-unplugged. You still do your things, but you're just kind of resetting and deciding what how you want to progress. Mm. What's on the horizon for us? We're going to continue to do you know quarterly updates because we love you, sister. <laughs> what do we have on the docket for the next couple of months? Well, I haven't exactly been chilling this summer. <laughs> My version of chilling. Um, so I think the last couple of times you had me on here, you know, it's been this whole thing of like, I became healthier, I lost weight, I won the award from Oprah, and, and I have found health and balance. I did not have it for many years. <laughs> and people ask me all the time, like, how, how, how? And it's not just like one answer, right? It's not just like, 
restricting your food because I don't believe in dieting. It's so many different things, but your mental health goes into it. And so I, this summer tested, like I had an idea of like, okay, I think these are the steps and like, this is what I want to say. I got 50 women and I tested basically a live course and I was like, Hey, let's do this and improve your mindset, build healthy habits, ditch dieting and be done with it. I put it all online and you can buy it on my website so you can have access to balance without borders is what it's called. Oh, nice. And I have a membership so you can work with me for three months, like while you go through it. But it's really important to me that women stop dieting and like realize that it's all just a piece of bullshit from the patriarchy and we're so much better off without it. And your mental health is important. Like I have so many things, but I was able to document that work in a way that can help a lot of people. Cause one thing that's been hard for me is like, I can't every single day be like on the mic, at, you know, helping on. people. Yeah. On. Literally on. Yeah. And you know me, you know me really personally too. Like, we're yeah, you're a bubbly, friends. you're a bubbly person usually. And even, you know, when you're off, you're still fairly on, you know, yeah. like you're still like a, accommodating kind warm and things of that nature but it is it's mentally exhausting if you have to like i like to find that fridays and saturdays when everybody else is going out oh let me sit in my underwear and smoke pot and fridays are my day i do not leave i do not commit to anyone i mean sometimes there's a rare occasion but like when you do decompress on those days you're like yeah yeah Yeah. but you do you're right so yeah i've just been you know decompressing from that big project but also thinking like how can i help people in a real way and help women in a real way because I recognize that I am not special. I've just had access to a lot of great resources that so many people don't. Therapy, the tools and things that I've had access to. So I'm just like, okay, if I can do anything, I can share thought and just like, hey, have you thought of it this way? Or what about this? And I love it. I just love helping women not necessarily take their power back, but like find balance. Like, I don't know anybody who doesn't want more balance in their life and stabilization. Because when you feel like you're not doing something, you feel this urge to be extreme and it's just like, ugh, like ragdoll back and forth between the extremes of feeling like you need to be doing all the things. And I promote, let's find a nice little meeting point in the middle. I love it. And it seems to be successful. You know, you continuously have, you know, classes full of ladies that are joining you. So it's, you know, it's, it's proven, you know, you worked with, you know, a great company in the past and sh- because of these exact things that you just demonstrate through your everyday life, which is kind of cool. It's not like a facade or, you know, like I change. We have to make ourselves a little more professional for this podcast than we would speak so candidly in our day to day to day. But, you know, like you, you are, you're able to just, you know, uniquely be yourself. And that's wonderful. Oh, you so, feel like I'm the same? Like I feel like you, you present yourself fairly normal as to who you are through your social platforms and podcasts as well. Yeah, I do. I did that because you can find her on social, I guess, podcast platforms under the the guy's podcast for like 7 million asses. Love the stoned appetite, Seed and Smith. Stop, stop. Don't make us blush. Tell us more. What do you you like about it? I'm so proud of Kip. I really am. I went on a whole... It's not just Kip. It's Chris and the team at Seed and Smith too. I'm sitting here with you it's not just you it's not just him he wants to make that clear but i remember when you guys were no vacancy (laughs) yeah it was years ago right (laughs) and that one probably applies more now than ever though to be honest i remember when i met you like at that dinner or whatever uh, a couple years ago and you knew who i was and i didn't know who you were (laughs) it's because at the time you didn't show yourself on your instagram you just were in guy posting plates of food and shit and no one knew who you were and i'm like the talent is is here even I, chris like i'm not even just saying this about you like, we do this need is to get my more favorite people on earth we and need to get more chris on I camera just know that he's just where he's at and he's not trying to be on screen and all that shit so i feel him we're gonna get him on screen this weekend at veil food and wine or veil wine classic we're gonna make him do some of the interviews really? Hell yeah, he's fucking hysterical. I he love is, it. But when he but, gets on camera, he's just a, like a he, he doesn't want to. He just. I know. We'll figure it out. We're gonna work with him this week. And we're gonna bust his balls. I love him. I know, and he kills it on the podcast. He kills it in real life. If y'all have him in, get ready because Chris's uh food truck series is coming to y'all from Denver westward. Yeah, mm-hmm. you heard that right. 
the largest independent magazine in Denver since 1977, has hired our boy Chris. Dennis.